everyone and welcome to a new video. In today's video, like the title suggests, I'm going to be making my medieval cottagecore unicorn tapestry inspired silk dress of my dreams. And this project wasn't something I knew I needed until I discovered this fabric, which I absolutely needed. I was browsing fabric as you do and I came across this which was described as being a red violet deep chestnut gold silk metallic horizontal stripe unicorn print sheer textured open weave silk. And there are about five words in that very long title that would have made me buy this, but the one that really stuck out to me was the unicorns. It's not often that you come across unicorn print fabrics that don't look like they would belong in a girl's nursery, and I have purchased and used many of those fabrics, but it was quite exciting for me to see this silk fabric that had a motif that I love so much. Instead of being happy, prancing, flying unicorns, it has unicorns that look more like they belong on a medieval crust or a tapestry, which I definitely use as inspiration when coming up with this design. I wanted to take advantage of this fabric's horizontal stripes by creating some sort of roughly tiered dress that could really highlight it, and I thought that would look sort of out of place with a really structured tailored bodice, so I decided to go for something more resembling a peasant blouse. I also knew I wanted to break up the print somewhat and use felt or waistband to define the waist. I thought about drafting my own pattern for this, but I ended up having this McCall's one in my stash, which I managed to alter into something quite similar to what I envisioned. I ended up incorporating a lot of sequins and trim into this to help highlight the metallic threads in the print, and even making a little hat to match. So if you're interested in seeing that entire journey and how I turned this pile of beautiful unicorn printed material into a beautiful dress, then keep on watching. So the pattern has these gourd pieces that make up the bottom, and then it has this upper piece that makes up the bodice. These gourd pieces actually have the natural waistline marked on them. So what I've done is I've just used tracing paper and laid it atop the pattern pieces and marked out the section above the natural waist as well as the section below the natural waist. And I've added seam allowances to each side uh, because there's not going to be a seam there. So I repeated this for all of the pieces and when I could, when the pieces had relatively straight edges, I actually combined them so there will be less to cut out. So now the lower portion of the skirt back and skirt side back are one piece as well as the lower portion of the skirt front and the skirt side front. So with all of that marked out, then I took out my bodice or upper pieces. Uh, so this is the natural waistline that I marked at the bottom edge of each piece. And then this is that uh, seam allowance that I added. And I also made sure to mark the darts on these pieces as well. What I've just done is I've overlapped the pieces at the seam point and then I have taped them together to form this into one long waistband piece because I want to cut this out of velvet which doesn't look particularly good with seams in it. And I say I want to cut this out of velvet but I was actually originally going to cut this out of a cotton sateen or crepe but uh, the material actually looks more brown than it does black, and I don't have very many brown fabrics. I think the only thing I have that will be suitable is brown velvet. So because velvet does not take seams well, it's very prone to puckering and slipping, I think instead of actually having these darts, I'm just going to pinch the fabric, or sorry, pinch the pattern rather, and try and incorporate those darts into the pattern so I don't have to sew them. And I am going to make a mock-up for this to ensure that it fits and it sits nicely where I want it to. So if this doesn't work out, then that should be okay. And I will just smooth out the top and bottom lines, and then I'm going to cut this out of muslin and create a little mock-up and see what it looks like. Okay, so I just did a mock-up for this, and it is a little bit small for me, which isn't surprising because this is a size 16, which I think is made for a 28-inch waist, and I sadly do not have one of those anymore. Uh, so I've just added about three quarters of an inch onto the back. That should be even more than I need, uh, but I do want to have a little bit to spare just in case. And I've also straightened the back since it was kind of on a slope. And then I've just made the front a little bit taller uh, because I thought that would be more flattering. So I'm going to fine tune that shape a little bit and then I'll mark the seam allowance and then I can try and find a fabric to make this out of. I'd really like to add some sequins around the border or some trim or something and I don't know if I'm going to do that before I touch the bodice upper piece or not so we'll see. This is the brown velvet that I have and my camera is really overexposing it. That is better. So I think this is a really good match for the darker threads in this but I was originally going to do a lace overlay on the waistband but I only have black lace so if I do that then it will be too dark and I was originally going to put black lace trim on the hem but I also can't really do that because it will be too dark. So I was thinking about using gold trim instead because I did want to sort of outline the waistband with some gold sequins. But this is the only gold trim I think I have enough of. I actually just bought this for something else. I do like how it sort of highlights the gold threads in the fabric but I don't know if it looks too cheap. I guess I can get the lining and the top cut out uh, and then decide that later. 
So I was playing around with samples, trying to figure out how to press the velvet without messing it up, if it would work with a pressing cloth or steam or whatnot, and pretty much everything failed, but I actually really liked how my damaged swatch turned out. It really lightened the color, and it also sort of melted the nap a little bit, so it looks almost like fake fur. So I have that down here, and some of you are probably going to absolutely hate how this looks, but I like that it lightened the color and made it actually match the unicorns in the fabric better, and also added a bunch of texture to it and a bit of a sheen where the fibers melted, and all that texture almost makes it look like a fur or hide which I think is weirdly fitting. So I think I'm just gonna go with this and I've gone ahead and fused a lightweight interfacing onto the back. So I think the next step is gonna be cutting out the lining for the skirt, figuring out how long these strips to form ruffles need to be, and also cutting out the bodice. So I didn't realize until right now that the unicorns go vertically on this fabric instead of horizontally. So instead of the unicorns running at the full length of the material, which is like six yards long, instead they run 42 inches long from selvage to selvage. So I actually have to sew a whole bunch of strips together instead of just using the length of the fabric and cutting it down, which is a pain because that means I have to match up the print uh, at each seam to make it look continuous. So I'm going to roughly cut out a whole bunch of strips, get them sewn together, and then report back when it comes to actually cutting them to the right length and hemming them and everything like that. All right, so I cut out 12 strips, and I really roughly cut these out. I just cut between the unicorn print pieces approximately, and then I sewed them together with the right sides facing each other, salvage to salvage, so I don't have to finish the edge because it is pre-finished. And when I was sewing these together, I tried to align the top and bottom of the print as best I could so it would look continuous. Unfortunately, one end of the print ends at a narrower point than the other, so it isn't perfect, but it looks relatively good. So I currently have one strip made up of six of the 42-inch wide pieces, one strip made up of four of those pieces, and one strip made up of two of those pieces, and the two are going to be the top tier, the four are going to be the second tier and the six are going to be the bottom tier. But before I can start gathering these and hemming these and getting the tiers sewn together, I have to trim them down to the right size because right now, as I said, they're just roughly uh, trimmed. So what I've done is I've created a pattern out of tracing paper. I'm just going to lay this over top of the strips and cut around either edge. I was originally going to try and mark a line in line with the edges of the print, but this fabric is really prone to shifting and warping, so I think that'll be difficult to do. And also the print doesn't have a really straight edge to sort of go off. Of, so I think it's going to end up being skewed. So I think having a piece of paper that I'm using as a guide which has right angles is going to be the most precise way to do this. So that is what I'm on to doing now. So the strips have all now been cut down to the proper length or width rather and now they're ready to be gathered and sewn together and I've actually already started that process. So last night I got the longest strip which will be the bottom tier hemmed. And this is evidently not that strip because this is not hemmed. All right, so this is what it looks like. I just turned the bottom edge inward by a half inch using my iron, and I turned it inward by another half inch, and from the right side, I top stitched it down three eighths of an inch away from the edge. And the reason I did that for the outside is because I'm still having sewing machine issues where it skips stitches. So this means my hem isn't as precise as it should be since I couldn't really see how much I was turning it inward by, but it means that the stitching looks nice. And unfortunately, it's very difficult to get an industrial machine serviced where I live. But that is now hemmed, and then I pressed the hem and then I gathered the top edge and I did this just by pushing the fabric underneath the presser foot slightly as I sewed uh, to create that pleated effect at the top and then I pressed that as well just so they would be a little bit flatter and easier to sew onto the next tier. Now usually when I'm sewing gathers I like to do two lines of gathering stitching and then my seam attaching it to another piece of material lands between those two lines of gathering and then the bottom line can be removed and that gives you a really nice finish. But I didn't do that this time just because this fabric is relatively delicate and I think removing that second line of stitching could cause little tears in the fabric that would actually be visible in the finished garment. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to fold the bottom edge of the next tier inward by a half inch and I'm going to lap it over top and align it with the stitching and just top stitch it on. So that is my plan and I think I'm going to incorporate some trim into that. This is the trim in question, and I actually used this for cosplay many, many years ago. And at the time, this trim was just being created, and it was very difficult to get your hands on. Or not very difficult, but it was like $2 a yard on Etsy, and I think I paid 8 bucks on Amazon for 30 yards of it. So it's come a long way since then. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half so all the leaves are on one side. I'm just going to top stitch that along the seam point, or along the stitch point of this, and then you will see the leaves sticking out when I lap the other layer of fabric on top of it. And that might not make a whole lot of sense, but hopefully it will as I'm doing it. So I think instead of trying to sew on the next piece of fabric on top of this and incorporate the trim into it at the same time, 
I'm going to go through and just base the trim on and then that will make it easier to get it caught uh, underneath the next layer of fabric. And I'm also going to fold the bottom edge of it, the second tier inward by half inch using my iron. And hopefully while I've been talking I've been playing footage of that so you have some idea of what I'm talking about because I'm aware I'm not the best at talking about things. So this is what it looks like so far, and I'm not sure if I like the gold trim, but I'm pretty committed to it now. <laughs> this fabric in person does have a pretty strong gold sheen to it, you can sort of see it over there, but the trim is just such a blinding gold, even though it's sort of the same tone. There's just so much more of it compared to the more subtle metallic threads that I don't know if it really matches, but I'm committed now. So basically I basted that trim on, and then I sewed the folded edge of the next tier on top of it. I just top stitched as close to the edge as I could. There are a few points where you can kind of see the band of the trim, but it's pretty subtle, so I think it's okay, but, but I'd hoped for it to be more hidden so you'd just see the leaves. But the fabric sort of shifted uh, after I removed it from the machine, so yeah, it is what it is. And I can't really rip out this material because it is quite fragile. So then I gathered down the top edge, so now I'm just going to press that and then repeat this process of basting the leaves on uh, and then sewing on the next tier. And before sewing on the next tier, I'm going to fold its bottom edge inward by a half inch or three quarters of an inch as well. Now once this is all done, I think from the back side, I'm just going to trim the edges with pinking shears. This is going to have a lining, so it's not going to be rubbing against my legs and particularly prone to fraying. Otherwise, I would definitely use twill tape or something to bind it. But since this is a light fabric, I do think that would sort of ruin the drape of it too. Okay, so the skirt is now sewn together and my very blurry bodice has been cut out. So to cut this out, I actually had to seam a few strips together to get the fabric wide enough to cut this piece since I wanted the unicorns to be running in a specific way across it. So those pieces were seamed together and then the seams were pressed and then I could cut out uh, two copies of this pattern which looks very, very strange. And just looking at this, you naturally want to think that this is the front and then this is the sleeve, but that is not the case. This is the center front, sorry, that is the center back, that is the center front, and then this top edge is going to get gathered down using elastic, and this edge will get gathered down using elastic to form the puffed sleeve. Or at least that is my recollection. What I do know is that I have to fold the top edge inward using my iron and then hem that edge to create a channel that elastic can thread through, and I think I have to do that for this edge as well, so that's what I'm going to do now. Actually, never mind, I just checked the instructions, which is a rarity for me, and they want me to sew up the center front and center back seams before sewing the channels, and then they want me to do up the side seams before sewing the channel for the elastic at the hem of the sleeve. So I'm actually going to be adding a back zipper to this as opposed to a side zip, so I'm not going to do up the back seam because I'll be finished with a zipper, but I will do up the front seam and then I will uh, sew the channels and I'll do up the side seams and then I'll sew the hems of the sleeves. So that is what I'm on to. So this is what the bodice looks like right now and you just have to have faith that's all going to turn out. I definitely wouldn't have a lot of that if I hadn't followed this previously, but I have and it worked out then so I'm hoping it will work out now. So what I did is I just turned the top edge inward by a quarter inch using my iron and then I folded it inward by a half inch and top stitched three eighths of an inch away from the edge creating a channel. I also sewed up the center front seam and I did that using a French seam and then I sewed up the side seams and I did that using a French seam as well. Uh, after that was done I went ahead and repeated the channel making process for the cuffs of the sleeves so I pressed the edge inward by a quarter inch and then I turned it inward by a half inch and stitched it down. I left about a half inch of the channel open at the side seam and that's where I'm going to thread the elastic through and then I've left the back seam open uh, to allow for a back zip closure and that's where I'm going to thread the elastic for the neckline through. So I'm pretty sure that is the next step. I'm going to look at the instructions to see if they tell me what to cut the elastic to otherwise I'm just going to make it up and I have my elastic right here. So you just take a peek at the instruction. They actually list the elastic lengths for each size, which is super handy. Then so I'm going to cut uh, elastic to be 18 and 3 eighths of an inch for the neckline. Actually, I'm going to add, I think, an inch onto that just because I did make this slightly larger and I want some elastic extending into the seam allowance at the center back. And then for the sleeves, I'm going to make it 12 and a half inches. So I'm going to get all of that cut. And then I'm going to insert it into the channels using a bobby pin. And I will show you why in a moment. All right, so the elastic is now cut and they want me to cut the elastic for the neckline as two pieces and each piece would be stitched onto either side of the center front seam and then you would end up with a sharp point at the center front seam because there isn't elastic running through it making it look rounded. But I actually think the rounded look is more cottagecore and more medieval so I'm going to embrace that and just use one uh, piece of elastic that is double the length they originally recommended. And now I'm just going to take the bobby pin and I'm going to thread it and I'm using a bobby pin for this just because I'm worried that a safety pin would spring open and get caught on the fabric. But that being said this is a loose weave so if I have issues with the bobby pin breaking through the channel and through the fibers excuse mini, then I will switch over to a safety pin. And the issue I'm having here is getting underneath the seam because it is a French seam. 
All right, so here we go. The bobby pin is breaking through the channel because the fabric is a looser weave. So I guess I am going to have to switch to a safety pin and then just be very, very careful uh, that it doesn't spring open. All right, so the safety pin broke through the fabric too because it is such a loose weave. So now it is stuck and I have to get that out and then figure out another way to get this through the channel. That was a huge pain, but I did end up getting the elastic through the top channel. I did use the bobby pin method. I did have to seam rip uh, a few openings in the channel just to get it underneath seams because it wanted to go through the seams and then it was getting caught. It was just a mess. So there are some points where the uh, edge is now flaring up and this entire edge just looked bulkier than I wanted because this fabric doesn't press particularly flat. So that's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. And I've also just gone through and threaded the elastic through the sleeves. And I have left this very, very tight because I want as much of the ends of the elastic exposed as possible and now I'm just going to stitch a half inch away from the ends so sewing the ends together into a loop and then I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away from that line of stitching uh, back stitching once again and then I'm going to clip off the excess very close to that second line of stitching so uh, hopefully it will hold but it won't be particularly bulky and then I have to gather this front section between the two notches so it fits my waistband all right so I've done that I didn't do a perfect job but it's good enough and then I'm just going to clip very close to that second line of stitching and removing the threads in the process and then you can just sort of ease those ends into the channel and just kind of stretch the material so the elastic is evenly distributed throughout and that is a finished cuff and as you can see it's sort of like not as flat as I wanted it to be but it will be good enough so now I'm just going to pin this onto my waistband to see what it looks like and then I will gather it down properly and eventually get it sewn onto the waistband all right, so I've used running stitches to gather between the notches at the bottom edge of the front panel, and I left the threads long, and then after I'd finished stitching, I just pulled on the threads and then tied them off until they were the right length for the gathering to sit between the notches on the waistband. The reason I did two lines of stitching is that when I sew the waistband on, it will be sewn between those lines of stitching, making the gathers look nice and even. So I also went through and took that gold leaf trim I've been using, and I just went through by hand and folded the leaves over to one side and then stitched along the portion that the leaves are attached to. So now I have trim where all the leaves are folded uh, to be on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to baste this along the edges of the waistband, and I've actually folded the edges of the waistband inward by half inch just by eye using my iron. I'm going to baste this onto either edge, and then I can top stitch the waistband to the bottom edge of the bodice as well as the top edge of the skirt. And the skirt is over here. I can't remember when I last showed it to you, but now all of the tiers are together. I've already roughly gathered the top edge, but I think I'm going to go through by hand and gather it uh, to the correct measurement so it perfectly matches my waistband. So I have been sort of busy. Uh, last night I went through and made several yards of the gold trim. I just folded it so the leaves were both on one side and then top stitched it down. And then I machine basted that onto the edge of the bodice piece as well as the edge of the skirt piece. And then I just lapped the edges of the waistband over the edges of the bodice and the skirt pieces and top stitched it down. And you can see some of my top stitching right there. I just used matching thread uh, because I knew it would mostly be covered by sequins, which is what I also got sewn on last night. So I sewed sequins onto the top of the waistband. I sewed them onto the bottom of the waistband. I don't have them touching, but they're not like spaced a significant distance apart. Uh, and I believe these are six millimeter sequins and they're gold but they're like a matte gold which I think looks nice on this. And then over top of each sequin to sort of hide the stitches and also make the color a little bit richer I've been sewing beads. So I just have these beads which are more of a goldish color which reminds me I bought like 30 pounds, I kid you not, of beads and had the time of my life organizing them. And I filmed the entire process and then never posted it. So if you can think of a good concept for a video that would involve footage of me organizing 30 pounds of beads, please let me know because I'd like to share it, but I feel like it'd be really boring. But anyway, after that was done, I also went through and sewed sequins and beads onto the gathered neckline. So I didn't sew these on to the elastic because then the elastic would no longer stretch. I sewed it on to the fabric just below the elastic. So it can still stretch and then the pattern is just uh, spaced further apart. So this morning's task is just going to be sewing a bead into the center of each sequin. I probably could have gotten this done last night, but I specifically left this as a task for this morning because I often really struggle to get started in the morning. And if this wasn't what I had to do on this today, the first step would be sewing in a zipper and I'm just not prepared to sew a zipper in early in the morning. But that being said, I'm currently getting started work at 10.30 so it isn't particularly early in the morning. And while I sew these on, I'm going to share my unpopular opinion, which is that I really don't like cottagecore. But it's not just cottagecore, it's all of the cores, it's the bounding, it's the various different labels that people assign to certain aesthetics. And if you're just using those labels to find posts on Instagram or to create a Pinterest board, I don't see any issue with it. If you don't take it too seriously, then I don't 
see any issue with it either. But as someone who defined my style as being vintage inspired for a long time, I feel like I missed out on a lot of garments and a lot of things that would have brought me a lot of joy simply because they didn't fit that label. And I realize now that it's okay to want to wear roughly frilly 1950s inspired dresses sometimes, and it's okay to want to wear structured military inspired 1940s garb sometimes, and it's okay to wear those styles with bright green hair. It's also totally okay to wear outfits that don't fit those aesthetics at all just because I like them. And sometimes that is a sweater with a beagle on it or a dinosaur printed cardigan. And I'm sad that it's taken me so long to realize that. And I feel like sometimes having these labels force you into a box and make you feel like you can't experiment uh, or share those experiments because people will judge you because then you'll no longer picking all of the boxes that make your outfit defined as a certain style. Again, if you want to wear a cottagecore inspired outfit from time to time, I think that's perfectly fine, obviously. If you want to wear exclusively cottagecore things, I think that's fine. But I think it's really sad when people limit their style or put limitations on anything really because they want to fit inside a certain box and then they end up missing out on things. I think it's especially a sore point for me because when I was cosplaying I knew a lot of people who were part of the Lolita fashion community and a lot of them couldn't afford the fanciest dresses and like to mix up their outfits and include other elements and there was just so much gatekeeping of them not even counting as part of the community because their outfits were a little bit different. And I just think that's really sad. And because of that, I feel like very little good can come down to labeling your style as something with all of these arbitrary rules. So I guess it's not even that the styles are bad, it's that the gatekeeping surrounding them uh, and people trying to apply rules to them is what I think is bad. So that's why this is my first time making a video about recreating something from one of those specific aesthetics, just because I sort of disagree with them on a level. But obviously I don't judge anyone for what they choose to wear and what they choose to call what they choose to wear, but just really structured styles in general make me a little bit sad because I think of all the things I missed out on when I was trying to abide by uh, rules for a specific aesthetic. Like I missed out on years of wearing my glittery irregular choice bunny shoes just because I didn't think they worked well with vintage inspired apparel, which is just madness because obviously glittery bunny shoes go with everything. <laughs> Anyway, that is the end of my rant. So the next step for this dress is going to be going through and trimming all of the seams with pinking shears, except for the seams at the bodice portion, which were finished with French seams. As I said earlier, I'm not going to be doing any other sort of finishing on these skirt seams, just because I don't want to make the skirt stiffer and ruin its drape. There's also going to be a lining to this, so the edges of the skirt will be rubbing against that, and they won't be as prone to fraying as they would be if they were rubbing against my legs. And speaking of that, after I finish all of the trimming, I guess sorting out the lining is going to be the next step. I thought it was going to be a zipper, but the lining should really be installed before that. And it's probably going to require some more hand sewing. So I think I filmed myself cutting these out earlier. This is the lining for the skirt, and it's been cut using that gourd uh, skirt pattern that I separated from the bodice pieces earlier on. I can barely remember doing that. It was like two days ago, so that says a lot about my mental state. I'm doing this out of a sateen coated quilting cotton. I definitely should have ironed this before I cut these pieces out, but I just wasn't feeling like it at the time. I still haven't recovered my ironing board, so it's very annoying to iron things right now. It's been that way for months and I still haven't recovered it. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and press these and then trim the edges to be level with the pattern because this was definitely not cut out very precisely. And I'm also going to use some of these scraps I had left over of this fabric to cut out lining for the waistband because I've decided I'm going to line that as well. So now that you're ironed, not perfectly, but they're way, way better. What is it about ironing where it takes so much more effort to get out a wrinkle than to cause a wrinkle? Like you accidentally crease the fabric and press over it and bam, it's in the fabric forever, but it takes like minutes to get out wrinkles that are just there from the fabric being folded. Cotton sateen is especially horrible to iron uh, just because the sheen really shows creases. It also frays a lot more than traditional quilt cotton. So if I have enough seam allowance, I'm definitely going to sew this with French seams. So all that being said, now they are going to get cut down to size. And I guess that's the next step, just French seaming these pieces together and then seaming them to the waistband, which I should also get cut out and pressed. Also, I did add extra seam allowance to the front and back edges, but I didn't make any additions to the skirt pieces. However, for the waistband, I did add over an inch. So to accommodate that and to make the skirt pieces match the width of the waistline, I'm just not sewing any of the darts into these. I don't think they're really necessary because this isn't going to have the fitted shape over the hips like the original did, since it has all of the ruffles at the overlay. All right, so I went ahead and trimmed all of the raw seams on the skirt, so now it looks a lot tidier. 
There was quite a bit of debris on my floor. There still is, which I have to vacuum, but at least the interior looks better. So then I moved on to the lining and I got all of these skirt pieces sewn together using French seams. So they're neatly finished on the interior and that won't contribute more fraying to this garment. It has gotten very wrinkled in this process somehow because this fabric likes to do that. So that is why it is lining and not a dress weight fabric. Uh, I went ahead and hemmed this using horsehair braid, which is just a plastic braided mesh that comes in various widths. And it adds a little bit of volume to the hem. So I thought this would help smooth the skirt out over top of a petticoat and just distribute it a little bit more evenly. So I used two inch wide horsehair braid and typically you'd sew this on with a quarter inch or a half inch seam allowance, but I ended up sewing it on with an inch and a quarter seam allowance because the skirt was very long. So I wanted to shorten it and I figured instead of cutting it, I would just sew it on with a wider seam allowance, which would use up more of that material. So something I have realized though is that I sewed the waistband on and I matched the centers and I folded the top edge inward by a half inch in preparation for sewing it onto the bodice, but I just realized that I cut this out of the wrong waistband pattern. I was wondering why it didn't line up perfectly at the ends, and that's because this was my first pattern before I made additions to it. So over here I have the unaltered pattern that I made a mock-up of, and then I have the altered pattern uh, that I ended up using to cut the velvet portion of the dress with. So I cut the lining out of this pattern by mistake, so I have to rip that off and cut a new waistband and then get that sewn on, and I'll turn the top edge inward by a half inch as well. And then it can be sewn into the dress, and then I can do the back seam and add a zipper and add some finishing touches. So let's get to that. Okay, so I have fixed the lining and it now has the proper waistband. And while I have this flipped upside down, I'm just gonna go through and remove that second line of gathering stitches on the bodice. And I didn't end up having to gather the top edge of the skirt down by hand like I initially thought because the trim sort of covers the top like quarter inch. So even if it isn't gathered perfectly, you can't tell. And when I was sewing the trim on, since the skirt uh, flares out below the waist, it was prone to flipping up and it didn't look great. So I actually just did a line of top stitching a quarter inch onto the trim. And the stitching isn't super visible even though it matches the fabric instead of the trim. So now with this upside down, I'm just going to align the center of the waistband lining with the center of the bodice. And that's easy to do because there's a seam there. And I'm going to pin these so the right sides are facing each other. So when this is worn, I have the nice side against my skin and the interior will look nice and pretty. So I'm just gonna line that up perfectly and then I'm going to pin outward from that point until I reach the end on both sides. And this is going to be hand sewn on. Uh, you could do this by machine. If there wasn't beading here, you could flip it so the seam allowance was flat and stitch very close to it. But since the beading has stitched down the seam allowance, that is no longer possible. And I didn't wanna worry about accidentally tacking the lining in inappropriate places when I was sewing the beading. And I also wanted to cover all the stitches attaching the beading so they'd be less likely to catch when I was getting the dress on and off. That's why I'm doing this after the beading. And there is actually going to be a little bit more beading that has to be done after I sew the zipper in, but I didn't want to have to try and sew over beads when sewing in the zipper. So I haven't beaded the last few inches and I'll do that at the very end. Now I'll just repeat this on the other side. And since I can't really machine this, I'm just going to stitch this edge down using little slip stitches by hand. And I imagine that will take like five minutes and I can spend those five minutes trying to psych myself up for the zipper. One thing that does make me slightly more excited to sew the zipper in place is that I just ordered a whole bunch of new old stock vintage zippers on eBay. I made offers on like three different lots and I ended up winning them all. So I now have like 250 or 300 new old stock zippers in my possession, which is great because in a previous video I mentioned my zipper shortage and not having ones that were long enough that matched my fabric. And now that will hopefully not be an issue for a very long time. So that is what the interior is now gonna look like. And this skirt piece is going to cover all the raw edges of the skirt uh, and hopefully it will make a beautiful dress once it's finished. All right, so that is nicely sewn in place. And I've just dug through my zippers, which is sort of difficult to do because they're all in a bin that my air conditioner's on because my air conditioner's broken. It's a long story. Well, it's really not that long of a story. My air conditioner is broken and it's upsetting. I was just gonna say I could use either one of these, but this one is actually a separating zipper and I don't wanna use a separating zipper. But this one I feel like is too long, but it is a polyester zipper so I can cut it. So maybe this clip is pointless because I'm not gonna use either one of these. I actually think I could get away with an 18 inch zipper on this one. But regardless of what I do, the process is gonna be the same. I'm just going to sew up the portion of the back seam that won't have the zipper using a French seam and I'll get that pressed. And then I'll just carry on pressing the portion of the edge that's left open inward by the same amount as the seam allowance. And then I'll top stitch the zipper in place and that's going to be pretty fiddly to do because this fabric is prone to warping so getting everything to line up might be a challenge but I'm going to do my absolute best. Right, so I seamed up the bottom portion with a French seam 
so it is relatively neatly finished on the interior. And with the lining, it made it difficult to see where the tears ended to get them lined up, but I've done the best job I can. And then I just folded the remaining of the portion that was open inward, and I pinned my zipper in place. I ultimately went for an 18 inch zipper. And I'm just gonna use a zipper foot to stitch as close to the teeth as I can. And then I will go in and finish adding embellishments and add a hook and eye to the top, and then I think it will be done. I'm not gonna film sewing in the zipper because I hate sewing in zippers, and I feel like if I try and film it, that's just gonna make it go even worse. So the dress is over here, and I think aside from a few tacking stitches, it's done. It has a zipper, it has the lining, it has all the beads on, so I think we are good. However, this video is not yet over because I've decided that I need a matching hat to go with it. And I'm thinking about those, I think they're called tenets, but like the hats you get when you're a kid at a renaissance festival that are really pointy, almost like a wizard's hat, but then they've got like feathers and fabric coming out the top. I think I'm going to do a miniature version of that to kind of go in line with my miniature medieval gown. So I just started by making a cone out of tissue paper and then I pinned that and altered that and cut that until I like the shape of it and how it sits in my head. And I'm going to transfer this to a new sheet of paper. Okay, so I finalized my hat pattern and then I got it cut out of purse weight interfacing. I can link the stuff I used down below. It's just really heavy uh, felt weight sort of interfacing. So here I have prepared a layer of the lining I'm using for everything as well as a layer of velvet. This has been ironed so it has the same uh, sheen to it and I've also added some interfacing to the back to prevent it from warping. So now I'm just going to lay my interfacing on top of this and I'm going to trace around the side edges like so. And I'm going to add about a half inch to this top edge. And I'm going to add about one inch to this bottom edge. Just so I'm working with lots of extra allowance in case I need it. And then I can remove my interfacing and I'm just going to cut along those lines. And it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. So for the lining layer, I'm going to go ahead and pin the back edges with the right sides facing each other. I'm going to sew those edges together or sew along that edge with a half inch seam allowance. So I'll just stitch along here with a half inch allowance and then press that and that will be the lining sorted. And then the outer layer, I'm going to go over top of my interfacing and I'm going to line up the side edges. Then I'm going to turn the top and bottom edges over the interfacing just like so. And I'm going to whip stitch these by hand to the interfacing just uh, sort of as basting stitches to temporarily keep it in place. So that's what it will look from the back side and then from the right side that edge will be neatly covered with fabric. All right, so I have basted that edge inward and then this one I just whip stitched down a little bit more securely. I did have to notch that edge to get it curved inward smoothly. So now I'm going to fold this with the right sides facing each other and I'm going to sew across that pen line, uh, which is a half inch away from the edge. And I'm gonna make sure that both ends are aligned as well. And then I'll repeat that on the lining and I'm gonna press those seams open and then I will report back. Okay, so this is my little hat. That's what it looks like from the back. That's what it looks like from the inside. The hole at the top is where I'm going to have some ribbons coming out and then this is the lining and I actually sewed the hole in the top of this one shut because the ribbons are going to go between the interfacing hat uh, and the lining. I'm just going to glue them in place and I've also gone around and roughly turned that edge inward or the bottom edge rather which is the only remaining edge inward by about an inch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line up the seams. I'm going to align the lining so it's about a quarter inch away from the edge of the velvet, so it hides all of the raw edges of the velvet on the interior of the hat. And then once that is pinned, I'm just going to stitch that edge down by machine, and I'm gonna cover that line of stitching with sequins, uh, so it will match the dress, or at least that is my plan. So I'm on to pinning. I just had to re-sew the zipper into the dress twice, and now it looks terrible, and I'm not in the best mood, but I got the lining stitched into the brim, or whatever you wanna call it, the bottom edge of the hat. So the next step, I think, is just going to be sewing the sequin and bead combo that I used on the dress onto the perimeter of the hat. And then in this little hole at the top, I'm going to be adding this. And this is just a seven inch strip of material that I folded in half and then stitched a half inch away from the two edges. And then I pinked that edge and turned it right side out. And now I have this. What I'm going to do is just cut it in half and I'm going to use it to form two loops. 
and I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll pleat them. And then I think I'm just going to sew a machine stitch across that to hold the pleats in place. My camera is not going to focus on it, but I'm just going to push the ends inside the top of the hat. And I might play around with the tails a little bit or I might leave them like that, but that's going to be the gist of how I add the decoration. I'm just going to tuck it in there and I don't even think I need to attach it because it's relatively fitted in there. So now just on to sewing the sequins and the beads and then this project will be completely finished. So I finished the hat and it brought me a great amount of joy. It has sequins and beads all the way around the bottom and then the interior is lined. I added the little strips I made to the top and I ended up folding them to create a bow and then just tacking them right there. Now as for the dress, it has not brought me much joy recently because I had so many issues with the zipper. It ended up being too small so I had to rip the zipper out and sew it in with a smaller seam allowance. And then I ended up stitching too close to the teeth of the zipper so the zipper would get stuck. So then I had to stitch further away from the teeth of the zipper and rip out parts of it and now it just looks really bad. And I normally wouldn't show this but that's the reality sometimes things don't turn out. And I can't sew it in again because it's going to weaken the fabric too much and then it won't hold the zipper. So it's just going to live looking bad. I'm at least going to go in and add a few sequins and beads so the uh, beading looks continuous around where the zipper is. As you can tell, Minnie's very upset too. But at least once that's done, the dress will be done. Unfortunately, we're ending on a bit of a bitter note here, but this zipper just gave me a world of trouble. It actually broke when I was taking the dress off after photographing it. So after all that, I still have to install a new one. But the zipper aside, I do like this dress. I think it's really cute and actually turned out better than I'd even envisioned. I think this pattern with the alterations I made worked really well for it. And I think the various trims and textures give this a medieval or historical feel while having that mid-century silhouette which is more commonly seen in cottage core. That being said, I think I like the unicorn fabric more than I like the finished unicorn dress. I just feel like the fabric is better than the garment, but I also don't think I could have utilized the fabric in a better way. I think the tiers really suit and highlight the print. I just don't love it as a dress as much as I loved it as a fabric and unfortunately that happens sometimes. But I don't regret making this because I had fun and I do think the finished dress is quite lovely. There were a few hiccups on the way to getting there but I ended up with something pretty so it's hard to complain too much. Except about that zipper. The zipper was truly a torturous experience on this one. <laughs> but aside from that it was fun and I hope you had fun watching this. Before I go I do just want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who make videos like this one possible. I'll have a whole bunch of their names on screen but I want to give a special shout out to my top tier patrons who are Amanda Amishar, Cindy Nelson, Jamie Denon, Remy S, Mary Kinsey, Tracy Smith, Ezra Hargrave, and Jordan Carpenter. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it and all of your patience and I really appreciate you guys watching as well. I'm not sure what my next video will be but I will talk to you then.